one and we're live. Welcome everybody. This is a humorous history podcast and we are the Goofy Historians. So today we're going to start with, um, we're going to try to do Richard the First and the Third Crusade. Um, we kind of introduced Richard the Third a little bit last time when we talked about the Battle, Battle of Hattin, but now we're going to get a little bit into um, the, kind of the hero of the Third Crusade, which the Battle of Hattin set up, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the characters, and they were very very colorful. As always, we're not real historians, but we hope this is mostly true and somewhat funny. If you enjoy this, please hit subscribe. Do it now. Go ahead and hit subscribe. I'll wait. Yeah. And also add a comment. And <laughs> add a comment. Yeah. Comment and tell us what other what other uh, parts of history you would like to us to discuss. That's true. Yeah. Give us some ideas. Yeah, and remember, our time. motto is truth when possible, but humor at all costs. All right, so last yeah. time we left off with how the Crusaders lost their cross in the Battle of Hattin. Um, now today, we're gonna step back a ways because we gotta give you some background. And I'm not sure how far we wanna go back, maybe all the way to 1066 with William the Bastard and conquering England and gives England a huge foothold in France at the end of the day. Um, but we definitely wanna talk about Richard the Lionheart. He was a character, I would say between him and his mother, Eleanor, and they win the most. <laughs> colorful people in history yeah you know richard the first richard the lionheart he only lived to be 42 and we'll talk about how he died because he died well as a king should but in those 42 years every year was like 10 years so actually he lived to be 420 years old <laughs> by my estimate because the guy couldn't yeah. sit, couldn't sit yeah. still um, but anyway, let's, let's start the reason for the Crusades we talked about, um, because the Christians were, were, they couldn't stop killing each other. And the popes were always like, you know what, you got to stop killing other Christians, let's go kill Muslims. And that was always the reason for the crusade. But, you know, it, it, it got um, polluted along the way. So where should yeah, we start? So there was, yeah, I mean, so yeah, the Crusades, <laughs> a little bit about the Crusades. There are actually eight Crusades. Uh, the Muslims won, there were eight official Crusades. There was a lot of unofficial Crusades besides like the People's Crusade. That was and a maybe great we one. Should, we should do one just on the People's Crusade, right? It didn't get a number. It was like Crusade 0 0.5 or something. It was it, basically it was, the Peasants Crusade. It, it was the Peasants Crusade. Yeah, that was the one where it was like, uh, uh, it was like the prototype that never got to market, right? <laughs> it seriously never got to market, right? Well, so but, a lot uh, of but them the, got killed. Eight crusades so. that the uh, Muslims won seven of them, and uh, Christians only won the first. The first one they got Jerusalem, but then they lost it during the Battle of Hattin, basically because at, the Holy Land basically became a dumping ground for unwanted nobility. Right? It's like uh, anytime you had an extra kid besides the one that was going to inherit, you know, your, your land, you send him over to the Holy Lands to, uh, to, to, to fight the Muslims and maybe wreak a little bit out for himself. And that just caused a chaos in the Holy Lands because the ones who were there were trying to establish some type of homogeny, trying to create a system where they could live in harmony with, 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 the, with the natives that are there, but it never happened. So anyways, one of these, like we said, it was uh, Raymond de Chautillon came and he pissed off everybody and they ended up losing the Battle of Hayton and they lost Jerusalem. And then when Pope Leo III found out, he had a heart attack and died. 
And he, was so, he was so upset. Gregory comes along. He declares a, the third crusade. And then he dies because he's so upset. Everybody's upset, right? So we get three. This is called the um, the Crusade of the Three Kings, like Korean, but not Kings of the Orient, like the Christmas story. These are Kings of the West. You have King Richard, the Lionheart. You have uh, uh, Philip Augustus, and you have uh, uh, Frederick Barbarossa. Who actually never got there? The poor guy. <laughs> he kind of like, Frederick Barbarossa kind of like died on the way. Yeah. So that's the question. You had this question. So they had this thing. If you die in the crusade, you get to go like. It's a complete indulgence, man. You just go like straight to heaven. You're like next to Jesus, no matter how big of an asshole you were, right? So if you get to heaven nowadays, like there's a lot of assholes up there who don't deserve to be there, right? <laughs> but the question is, <laughs> I mean, like like philip didn't deserve to be there but so yeah frederick barbarossa he's riding over right he's like but he's almost 70 by then he was actually in the second crusade too with uh eleanor of aquitaine um richard's mother but he falls off his horse wearing armor and he can't get up so he drowns and, and i don't know if he gets to go to heaven but not. his army dissolves he had like huge army like 100,000 people and only like 5,000 of them made it after his death because he yeah, was most a... of them just went home right yeah and they... one of them that made it was Leopold of Austria who ends up <laughs> who, who Richard ends up pissing off later in the crusade because he doesn't want to treat him as a king so when yeah, the right, first he crusade was Richard the, prisoner yeah, yeah. yeah the first, first crusade was 1095 and this is like 100 years later uh, they've lost. They've they've lost Jerusalem. They've lost everything in the Holy Land except for one city called Acre, and um, they captured the king. They captured the head of the Knights Templar, the head of the uh, Hospitallers. And they have basically nothing going on um, there. But Gregory does call the crusade, and uh, the three kings decide to go. Um, Barbarossa is done, and it takes. Richard the Lionhearted and Philip another two forever. or three years forever to get there forever well Philip mainly finally he, got there first but then Richard couldn't focus he was like he, he could not focus Richard cannot focus uh and Richard is the son of Eleanor of Aquitaine right. who was a character in his own her own right and they were and she was the granddaughter of William the Seventh of Aquitaine, who was the first troubadour, um, who excommunicated the Pope or something. So they, they, that's a family that brought uh, color to the Dark Ages. Absolutely. And, and Eleanor, though, she's not known for being a successful crusader. When she showed up with um, Richard's wife to be they were like oh shit eleanor's here because during they blamed eleanor for the loss in the second crusade because of her giant baggage train so <laughs> when she shows that, up for the, the third she, crusade, she, she was having affairs with her uncle so right. that, that was that was the party crusade the nothing party happened crusade. they they were supposed to come back and get um aleppo or somewhere or um Odessa. They were supposed to get Odessa. They never do. They never even. They never fight a battle. They go there and, and, and they go in there, figure it. They became tourists. They went down and looked at uh, Jerusalem, and then they said, "Well, let's take Damascus," which was never on the agenda. And they got to Damascus, and they said, "No, we can't take Damascus. That's too hard." And so they all went home. So, but this is forty years after that. So Eleanor is in her seventies or something now. Um, Richard the Lionhearted, who's the son of Henry the Second, who is uh, uh, the the one who, who does he ends up killing that that Archbishop of? Uh, oh uh, yeah, um, <laughs> he 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 recently died because he's no longer. Yeah, yeah, he there. recently died because Richard is king now, right? Yeah, uh, but there's only he had a bunch of kids, but there's only two left. Richard and uh, Richard the Lionheart and uh, John, who becomes John the Bad of the Magna Carta era and shows up in all of the uh, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood. Uh, I stories. totally believe in Robin Hood now 
because you know everything that's happened to the to America in the last five years in 900 years no one's <laughs> gonna last believe that weeks. shit <laughs> yeah no one's gonna no one's gonna believe it in 900 years so the tales of Robin Hood totally makes sense the Sherwood Forest and all that because yeah because we'll get into it later but king john was trying to raise money to get richard out of, <laughs> out of prison out of jail. To ransom right so, so he yeah, had to so, raise yeah tax. so john john gets a bad, bad rap in the in the robin hood stories because the robin hood story is all about him getting money for himself right he yeah, wasn't he getting was... money for himself he was getting money to bail out his his older brother who pissed off everybody between the holy lands and england <laughs> Yeah, so he, he could, did. He couldn't, he couldn't get home. <laughs> Richard the Lionheart did piss a lot of people off, but nobody um, would say that. Um, I don't know. He was he was such a complex character. You know how they always say that great men are seldom good men. I mean, you could definitely say that about Richard the First, Richard the Lionheart. But there were times <laughs> when he was kind of good in a way, in, in his weird way. Um, but the during the Crusades, there was a lot of crazy jobs that people had. Everything from, you know, the cannon, the, the catapult ball logistics to the bards who would sing songs, this, that, and the other. But one of the jobs was the chroniclers. And these are the guys that wrote the little cartoons with the little words, and they would tell the story of what was happening. And the chroniclers must have been, they were working overtime because there was with Richard. <laughs> crazy shit going on. Let's talk about the time when Richard was, where was he? I think he was in Cyprus or the other place, Sicily. And he was bored and he was walking through a village and he saw uh a hawk somebody had a, a falcon <laughs> a hawk and, yeah, and a he peasant, was like a peasant had a falcon a peasant had a falcon a peasant, yeah. and it was a royal peasants bird. can't own falcon a peasants can't ride a horse peasants can't own a falcon it was a very high hierarchical society back then and the fact that this peasant had a falcon just pissed richard off right and what happened he he started chasing this guy or something on his horse and then the whole uh, the whole oh, village, village came out and, and, and richard is the king of england on this crusade and he's like by himself oh he's got right? one night with him he's got one night with and them, they have right? to run because they're throwing because peasants couldn't wear swords either but the peasants <laughs> could throw rocks and they were like throwing rocks at him and he had to like run away and shit yeah, he ran. He, so yeah, all these this whole town was chasing after. They didn't have no clue who he was. He was just some guy who was interfering with their bird hawking or something. And then, and he's like running away from all these peasants, throwing rocks, and he finally makes it to some like to some nunnery or something. He hides out in a nunnery, and then finally his friend goes back. He has to get rescued by his real army. So he he doesn't. Uh, I mean, the whole thing is that's what Richard does. He. When he finally decided to get going from England, well, he wasn't really in England, even though Richard didn't even was speak English. This guy he didn't speak English, right? I mean, even though he was technically the king of England, he was never in England. He spent like six months in England, you know, his whole life, or at least since the age of nine. He was because at that time he was the son of Eleanor of Aquitaine. Aquitaine is in southern France, right? So. It's because of the Normans, like you said, 1066. It was 1066. Normandy is in France. Who are some Vikings that got settled there, right, by a, a, a previous king of in, king of France? And so when he, so when the Normans conquered England, now they were kings of England and also um, um, dukes of France, right? It's supposed to pay homage to the king of France. So and Aquitaine was a lot cooler place to hang out aquatic was a lot because that was where the troubadours were that's yeah. where the parties were you know and that's that was the place to be so he never really spends a lot of time in england and he spent a lot of time fighting in 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 france so and he had time, spent a lot of time being gay in france yeah. you got to talk about okay so richard the lionheart was a manly man 
but he had a rainbow of gayness running through him that was as wide as a Mack truck. And this is, we're not making this up. This is documented. Everybody knows it. Um, Philip, who is the king of France, France is much smaller back then, and Richard were gay lovers for years during their youth. Yeah, so when, when yeah, so yeah, Richard, Richard didn't want to grow up in England, in London. As a matter of fact, he tried to sell London at one time, he trying to raise a buyer money. For it, yeah. He couldn't find a buyer for it, but he was trying to sell it. And then he may have been joking, but who knows with Richard. He, he actually said, if, if, if anybody wants to buy London, I just give me a good You know price. what? These guys did have a sense of humor, and Richard especially. But yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyways, he, 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 he left London and went to live in Paris with uh, Philip, right? It was Louis. <laughs> so... Philip was Lewis. They're actually related son. because Philip yeah, they're kind of related. They yeah, so they both they're I, I know what both, it is. Philip is um the it's son like his steps steps son or stepbrother or something. Because because Richard's mom used to be married to Richard's to the, father, but they got a divorce. So that's right. Philip is from another uh mother, but still they were previously married, so I guess they're in-laws. He, they're like stepbrothers in a oh. way once removed or something but yeah they're oh, related. what they were were gay as yeah all. they well, were so gay they they did when they grew up together in in paris they they slept in the same bed but apparently i mean other historians go well that was common back then people nights slept in the same bed but I I don't know, but it, the, the the story is that that they were like if you if, if you if you watch the Lion in Winter, right? That whole theme about remember Lion in Winter with who who's in it? Catherine Hepburn and um, Peter O'Toole. Uh, Peter O'Toole. That whole theme comes up because Philip shows up and then uh, Henry the Second finds out that he, Henry was going to give the uh, the kingdom to to uh, Richard, and then he finds out that Richard and Philip were gay, so he didn't want to do it anymore. He was going to give it, so he ends up giving it to John. But and, anyways, then, so. and then his mom was concerned. Okay, so I don't yeah, think if everybody's doubt, concerned. If everybody <laughs> around you is concerned <laughs> and you want to pray the gay away, you might be gay. Yeah, Not so that was the story. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. So, so he, it's <laughs> so much you can say about Philip. So he gets, uh, he gets on, he gets his army. Oh, so he's, he's taxing everybody with the Salonin tax to get money. He's trying to sell London. Nobody wants it, but he gets enough money to get to London. But he like takes off ahead of his troops, right? He's waiting down in Southern France, waiting for his troops to come. His troops leave. So they're on a ship and they're coming down. They actually attack Lisbon <laughs> for <laughs> some unknown reason, right? They go to shore, they, 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 they sack some city in Portugal, then come around. But Philip, I mean, Richard gets tired of waiting for him and he just like takes off. <laughs> right? Yeah, he commandeers another ship. He commandeers another boat because this he just, he's, the way they describe him, he's like, they say he's like six foot five, uh, blondish red hair with blue eyes. And he literally cannot sit still. You know, if, I mean, if he's sitting still, he's like drumming or, moving his feet he's got to be moving at all times right so he just exhausts everybody and he just has no patience to wait for his army so he like shoots out ahead besides he knows his mother's coming with this what's her name well margaret or something who says he's, he's there his eleanor of aquitaine is chasing richard with this woman who's trying to, to get him to marry right so he takes who's off from so portugal doesn't... Who's from Port no, from Spain? Um, uh, Spain yeah. She yeah, was really docile, and they said that she was very she she didn't argue a lot, which was perfect for Eleanor. Because Eleanor perfect for Richard too, right? Yeah, <laughs> perfect for Richard, right? But he takes off, right? Uh, and and so and so like even though Richard and um, uh, Philip were grew up together. They became very competitive 
extremely competitive as they grew up, right? And and Philip is like the mirror opposite of Richard, right? Richard is like an extrovert, right? He's there's not a lot of internal shit going on, but he's an extrovert and he's very bright. Where uh, Philip is a conniving, you know, little worm, right? He's, he's a not he's Machiavellian before a very Machiavellian. Machiavellian, right? And he's and so he's in. Remember, England owns like 70% of France at this yeah. time. And Philip is up there in Paris with his like 30%, and he's competing with Richard. And Richard's like this over the top rock star, and, and Philip is this little conniving worm. Right? Well, and, and they turn into and, and, and jilted put, lovers for the next and, and, 10 and they years. were jilted lovers, right? Uh, and so they, but they both get down, they both agree to go to the Holy Lands to fight for the Crusades. Uh, and Philip is, is an accountant. <laughs> he, he's, he's very good at counting money and administrative stuff. He's a good administrator. So when he says he wants to get to the Holy Land, he has, he's like, he has everything planned out, right? The, stop here for a day, here for a day. He gets there. Richard doesn't get there for another year, right? Because everywhere he goes, he gets involved in the local. Yeah, there was two. Okay, Sicily and Cyprus. I get them mixed up, but those two places delayed Richard for like a year. Okay, so year. Sicily, he ends up taking over the whole country for some reason because he's because there. his sister, his sister, his sister, who was a poet too, oh, lived okay. lived there. Yeah, yeah, lived there, and he was post. She was married to the king of Sicily or something, and he, her husband died, and then this Tristan guy comes along and takes all her money and then you don't do that to Richard's sister that was a bad mistake right? so he ends up pretty much like taking over the whole freaking country and then the other stop which was and, and what's, what, what was funny he, he builds a castle there oh yeah it's it's like, like, like Richard what are you there. doing you're, you're this is like a stopover you don't build a castle you stay at the Holiday Inn right <laughs> you know, no instead place. of staying at the Holiday Inn he built the Holiday Inn <laughs> he built a he built a castle on a hill and then he like took the castle down and took it with him so yeah he took over he basically took over Sicily and and uh was even on the verge of fighting Philip's troops because his troops show up eventually can't the, his troops catch up with him in Sicily so his troops are causing havoc and Philip's going, forget, I'm out of here. I can't, I can't, I can't handle, I can't handle you, Richard. This is the trauma. I can't handle the trauma. We're just supposed to get to the Holy Land. So Richard takes off. I mean, no, Philip, Philip takes off. Philip takes off and goes to the Holy Land, right? He's, so he's there for, he wants to get there first. And then, um, Richard's mother shows up with 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 Margaret or whatever her name is. Batonia. Oh, he marries Batonia. her. He marries yeah, her. But, but, yeah, he marries her, but not in Sicily. He but he sends so he sends him off ahead. And there's uh oh there's Cyprus. This, Cyprus. He sends him off ahead, but there's a storm and they get stuck in her ship gets shipwrecked and it gets up on the shores of Cyprus and then the Cyprus uh, has Richard, an Richard, evil king. So there's Cyprus has king. like an evil, they call him an emperor because he's the brother to the emperor of, of, in, in, in Byzantium, right? Byzantium. Right. He's a Byzantium. Well, he thinks he's the emperor of Byzantium. So he's in rebellion. So okay. this is so he calls himself the emperor, but he's nothing. He's, he owns Cyprus and he has a nice horse, right? And everybody so, thinks he's the evil, and Richard wants his horse. <laughs> well, he's pissed off at him because he was. He was trying to like trap his wife and they wouldn't help him and stuff. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He wanted the money. They had they had the they had the, yeah, he, he got like Richard's treasure ship and his wife and his sister. And Those that was just that, that, really that was if decisions. anybody made a bad decision, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was it. He should have heard of, he should have heard by then what happened in Sicily, right? Yeah. <laughs> But he didn't, and he made those bad decisions. And Richard ends up chasing him all over his own island and getting and stealing his horse. Oh, and the guy, the emperor guy, because he was a, a prisoner from the Muslims, and he hated chains. He's like that was his biggest fear to ever be in chains. And irons. He didn't want to be in irons. irons. So Correct. Richard puts him in silver irons. Gold, gold <laughs> irons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that, that was the final. So he finally had him and he chased him to the end of the 
end of Cyprus, and he's and then he says, well, you got to give up. He says, well, I'll give up, but just don't put me in irons. And Richard goes, okay, give me your horse, give me your country, and I won't put you in irons. And so he gives up, and he puts him in gold. Yeah, and he sends him away to some tower somewhere. We never hear about we him. Never hear from him again. But right? that's where, but finally now, Richard is finished with all his crazy divergences and he finally gets to the ho to the holy land and that's where we're going to segue um into the actual third crusade it, it took this long just just to get there um so yeah i can't remember but by, by, by this time back we'll by this talk about the third crusade so tune yeah. in and we'll be right back <laughs> 